because I feel like people follow on when you say that. <laughs> yeah, everybody wants the TPK. We're live. Everybody wants the TPK. Got it. Everybody wants Understood. the TPK. Today's topic, TPK. How to do End it. Stream. How do you do that? <laughs> to TPK? Yeah, uh, how? Easy. You just hit them while they're down. <laughs> That's one way. Throwback. Got or just hit them so hard they die outright. Yeah, that that's you, you have to force a crit that way somehow. <laughs> that's hard to do. Anyway, well, welcome to welcome. the show. Welcome mm. to season three, episode sixteen of the Dungeons and Dallas podcast. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> we still got like we a whole hour and a half. <laughs> every Thursday at seven thirty Eastern. No other time that matters. <laughs> Unless you're in that time zone, then do the math. Then, 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 then do the math. <laughs> or just go okay. into our Discord where the time zones are converted automatic, auto magically, auto magically on, <laughs> on the schedule page, so you don't have to worry about time zones. It's true. Just just do it. What are we going to anyway, talk about? We are talking about D and D stuff and download stuff. No. <laughs> Wow, so descriptive. <laughs> we're going to do our recaps like we always do. Then we're talking about running away in D&D &D and in real life. No, in D&D, &D <laughs> where when you can do that, when you should do that, when you shouldn't do that. Um, then we're going to talk about how when people go off the rails in a book, how do you deal with that as a DM? Because that can be scary. And it is. Last, we're going <laughs> we're going to talk about meta aid as players. And how to deal with players that meta too much because it happens. It's sometimes hard. It it is sometimes hard for especially for a player that doesn't who isn't a DM to separate their knowledge from their player knowledge. I also think it's different than letting someone know that something on their character sheet is possible. Yeah, like I if agree. like if you're playing with a fighter and they're like, and I think I'm going to end my turn. Just so you know, you have bonus actions. Yeah, no, I think that that's smart. I actually uh, wanted to add, I, I wanted to add something to the end of Dungeons where I wanted to ask you about a, a thing I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah, we'll add we'll, a we'll thing. We'll do that. Ooh, mystery. Anyway, you're the recaps. Well, sorry, I'm the center of the sandwich this week. So you go first, pick which one of one of your two you want to go with. Let's start with Waterdeep so that it's further away from tomorrow's stream and <laughs> <laughs> feels like there's more of a gap. Yes, the 15 minute further. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so the party found out that it was Davil Star Song that was the murderer. Um, we knew that, but he just couldn't. It was another one of those frustrating D and D scenarios where <laughs> I decided in that moment that if I ever die, I'm playing a barbarian because <laughs> they barbarians go around those moments very easily. By attacking. A barbarian would have just attacked, gotten annoyed and attacked Davil about halfway through his, well, I don't know, you can't prove it. It's true. <laughs> uh, but I mean, well, it's a classic scenario. Go go on. I just, I need to interject a little bit there, but you, you continue. Uh-oh. My Discord's doing the stupid thing again. On stream? Oh, no, not on stream. Just for me. Just don't if, look at it. Don't don't look at it. Can I just put something up over it? Something like uh, can I put? Well, the, yeah. Look, it's still capturing fine. Yeah, you're good. Um, yeah, we're good. Okay. Um, cool. Um, Davil, we knew it was Davil. Yeah, so you guys knew it was Davil, and uh, basically, I'm using Davil as a a device to get some more plot by putting you guys on a string of. Basically little encounters. Little one shots almost. <laughs> Kinda. That's what it feels like. Um, Which is good. I like as, as soon as the person who killed Volo is brought to justice, so to say, the statue teleports back to the material plane. Oh, okay. Um, so had you somehow killed him? I guess not somehow, but had you killed him? Yeah. Um, it would have just hard. it would have just come back. Um, to the material plane, or if he gets arrested, it also goes back to the material plane. Um, it, 
It was it was a difficult enough fight that Rufus asked me if I was actually planning on keeping Goofy until Dungeons and the Mad Mage. <laughs> I do remember that question specifically coming up in that encounter. <laughs> <laughs> well my um, intention wasn't to kill anybody there but you could see that i, I totally happen. could okay like i said if it happened it happened i was cool with it like you know you know me well the thing is is that in you a city one shot one of my guys once so like i'm cool with death at this it's point. it's on purpose that you guys have a lot of money like you could have just paid a cleric to resurrect you and i would have been like okay <laughs> That's why I don't know I, if anyone would have thought about that. Well, I would have. Yeah, right. I would have brought it up. That's why I asked, like, do you plan on playing Goofy in the next? Because <laughs> I would have made sure that the option was presented. I honestly, don't know if I would want to be resurrected in that way. Because you know my thoughts as a player on that. On as a DM, as a DM, my thoughts on that. Like, ah. I, get, I, I get it because it's water deep. I don't know when, it, when it's a I silly know. little side one shot like yeah, that that we're using to advance time. We're do we're doing it more for fun than for but glory. He would have died doing what he what he wants to do, and that's you know protect us friends. You could say no, and that would be fine too. But if you wanted to, I think <laughs> I think there's ample. I know justification we'll see. if he if he dies in a valiant way defending his allies then no i don't want him coming back but if he dies in a really stupid like one shoddy like complete like walks into a trap with not a lot of health that he couldn't see <laughs> death i'd be like yeah no i can yeah it's fine that would feel cheap um but uh yeah i found a way to fix my dilemma what I, uh, I'm just looking at the OBS, like I brought the OBS screen to my front screen now, so I'm just looking at That's that good. instead. Yeah, now I can see you. <laughs> That's good. Um, and then, yeah, so you guys got another quest. You guys had to track, or you're in the process of tracking a couple things down. One of them has had to get in. One of them's a key, and one of them's had to get into the Dead Winter Feast running. Yeah. Because I wanted to give you guys a... We already got into the Dead Winter Feast running. Yeah, you did. But you wanted to. <laughs> that... Yeah. <laughs> I, no, we, like, we, we did. You did. That was what we did a good portion of the night, which was fun. You know, got to go around and talk. Because I wanted to, to find a way to get Emic back into it before we Emic. finish the campaign. Talking From about Emic Froon. Best friend? Yeah. Be best friend? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I, I like best friend. I'm happy he's coming back. So we I... were going to go there again. And then. We were told not to because you didn't have everything prepared. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, because Dombro wasn't there. Well, no, like this is the second time we were going to go there. Um, but we didn't have time, I think. It was late enough in the night that you didn't want us to start that. So you said he was closed again for the second time. Yeah, because we only had like 10 minutes or something like that. But it's like a whole yeah. thing. So I was like, <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. Um, yeah. But yeah, we learned the importance of concentration spells. Yeah, they when they were fighting in the Davil Stong or Star Song fight, um, Rouse got dominate personed and started attacking Goofy and crit. Yeah, I was like I said, if I went down, I went down. It's fine. Yep. Um, and but, then we learned the importance of concentration. Yep. There were you and Rouse almost went down. I don't remember Rouse almost going down. You mean Philren? That wasn't Rouse. It was me and Philren. Oh, you Philren and yeah, and you and Philren, yeah. But we we came back. We came too. So I decided I was like, well, what's a good way to get you this information? I was like, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for Davil to just spill his guts unless he's we do something for. Him. Yeah, I'm exactly. Sure. So I was like, well, rather than just having him be the lore dump NPC, it'll send you guys on. A quest. Okay. Key. We gotta be stealthy. <laughs> oh um, no, being stealthy won't help. He has to give it to you of his own yeah, volition. Like he has to ask. He has to ask. Yeah, we yeah. So right now It'll you ha you guys have to find a way to get his squire from his side. Yeah, because if we don't, then he won't let us talk to him. And the uh, squire knows that he's very easy to persuade. I'll tell you this. This leads into another quest. Sure. And then once you do this that, is that where you chain. So like, is this your way of ch 
a changing around the whole open-endedness of just trying to find Manchun's hideout? Yes. Okay. So it's like a chain of quests to find it as opposed to just find it. See yeah. what happens. Yeah, exactly. As opposed to just let's go there so that we can try to get the Stone of Galore. Where is it? Who <laughs> knows? We're just going to go investigate. We're going to Scooby Gang it. Um, it just, I'll, I don't know. It's Scooby Gang. It sounds like fun. It, it sounded a lot more fun than just kind of figuring it out. <laughs> no, I agree. That makes sense. But yeah, the the real encounter or not encounter, we'll say it's more it's kind of dungeon crawly. It's got it's it's kind of like a puzzle dungeon, but it's got some it's got some combat in it as well. It's got a bit of both. Are you talking about Manchun's lair? No, the thing that you guys are about to go do. Oh, the key? Yeah. Or the thing after the key. The the way that you're going to get the bard to get you the key. Oh, God. Quest chains. <laughs> what, am I playing World of Warcraft again? <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> yeah, I know. This will be fine. This is a pretty okay. important piece of information. No, like, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with yeah. this. I, I, I'm ready. I'm happy that we're doing stuff and not just walking around in the dark for once. I don't know why it's so open-ended. This is the first time in this campaign that I feel like I'm actually doing things. You know what's funny? When I took the reins, now the game kind of feels good again. Once Correct, I, because <laughs> once I took it out of the book. Is, this module is them not knowing what to do to get you to level 5. <laughs> to get you to start Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Is everyone okay? Yeah, I just okay. knocked the cup off my desk. It was empty. Did it but break? No, it didn't break. Okay, then we're good. We're good. But yeah. Um, once I started interjecting my own stuff, you're going to find that with Horde of the Dragon Queen, too. Now that I'm interjecting some of my own stuff, it's yeah. going to start having more purpose and meaning. I feel like Horde of the Dragon Queen was not that bad. No. After playing Waterdeep, it didn't, it didn't feel that bad. It's this. They're kind of the exact opposite. Waterdeep's kind of like, hey, here's the world. And Horde of the Dragon Queen's like, you're going to go here, and then you're going to go here, and then you're going to go you're here. You're going to go here. And then you're yeah. going to travel a thousand miles and just do random encounters the just whole way. Whatever. Yeah, it's fine. You're you're thinking too much. You're thinking too much. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's basically what happened in Waterdeep. They're currently about to go on to a quest for um, a key to a vault that'll let Davil Starsong start his life over. That's how, why he agreed to give him the information. He's like, look, you're either going to kill me or I'm going to be captured. I'd rather not die. But if I'm going to be captured, yeah. I have to get away from the Zents and I need money to do that. All you have to do is convince this guy to give you his Easily key. Easily convincible guy. That's what I was told. He's convincible, but the squire Squire's at his not. side is not. Is not. He's known to get very drunk and be very generous while he's drunk. And yeah, everybody, the way you, you guys don't know this yet, but I know you can separate it. Everybody in town knows about this key because he's bragged about it so much. Ah. So he's he would the reason he's such an easy target for Davil is because even if he tried to bring up charges. They would know yeah. that the key wouldn't work unless he had given it to him anyway, so he wouldn't yeah. have a case because he, of his own gave volition, it to willingly. gave yeah. it to yeah. him. Willingly, yeah. indeed. Yeah. So, really. that's why he wants that, because he can't be tried over it, even if it comes back to him. That makes sense. Um, makes sense. So that's what he's asking for, and in return, he's basically going to be a lore dump NPC that'll answer any questions that you want within reason. Within re I just want to know what uh, the Stone of Galore is, and it, if he doesn't tell me, then I quit. <laughs> it's going to tell you anything that you could have learned in the module up to this point, but may have missed. He won't tell you anything that you've yet to find out that's later in the module. Okay, that makes sense. Well, we're getting really close to the end now. We're level five. We're... We're we're max level for the module. You will be level five. You said you said level up. Oh yeah, I did. Your words were level up. Yeah, you guys are doing these. I couldn't remember if I was leveling you up at the end of the modules or at the start of them. Okay, cool. 
that that makes sense so yeah you guys are five so yeah when you finish this you're one dungeon away from finishing we're, we're mansions dungeon well finishing. that's not true you're two dungeons away we're a double mansion dungeon yeah away from finishing well, once you get the Stone of Galore, they're still getting to the vault. I mean, what if we don't want to get into the vault? We want to just protect the Stone of Galore. Well, you also know that the money in the vault was stolen from the people of Waterdeep, or if you don't, that's one of the questions that'll be answered. So, I don't remember that. But well, we you know that it, you know that it's Renair's father's money, and that he embezzled a crap ton of money. Yeah, and that's what's in the vault. He embezzled yeah. it all from the citizens of Waterdeep because he worked for the government. That makes sense. So and that's what happened. That was a lot of smaller pieces of information that you had that you would have had to put together. But you had all that right. information individually. Goofy doesn't know where to put things together. <laughs> but yeah, so you'll learn about that stuff and you'll have some personal interest in, in doing it. Got to Got to get that money back to the people. And, you know, I'm sure someone will say you could probably make a case to pay for Volo's resurrection from it as well. I mean, I feel like that fund's really going to work out for us, though. <laughs> that resurrection fund. 100%. I don't know. Not a chance it wouldn't. Yeah, that's about all that happened in Waterdeep. Why don't you tell us about Masterpiece and Broglio? Didn't do a lot. Oh, thanks for the raid. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the raid. <laughs> we, I mean, we did, we did a good, a good enough amount of things. We, our players had their second heist or started their second heist. They learned everything about what to do, where to do it, what was stolen, how to get it back. Um, and they did a lot of what you do in the first part of the heist. There was a lot of planning. Um, I decided on the on the fly, a hundred percent, to put in water deep <laughs> where you guys learned the stuff, which was, it was funny. I was like, "Hey, I can put this in water deep. We can make a small connection." That's why I was like, "Are we in water deep? We could go to that place across the street, Bruins Brew." <laughs> <laughs> nah, there's no roof on there. That would have been a bad choice. <laughs> yeah, it would have been. But yeah, um, so that's where they got all their information from with the golden key and whatnot. Um, if anyone hasn't played or looked at what the Golden Keys are, it's a organization. It's a thief organization. They're good, and they get the. They have a bunch of people that work for them. And the way they get their jobs out is through a music box that has a key that you put in it. And when you turn it, it gives you a message telling you your job. Boy, so did I did make that. my character wrong the first time. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's yeah. for Thieves Guild. And I made like the thieviest thief ever. And he's <laughs> and like, oh, no, be... they're they're all good guys. They're like Robin Hood type thieves. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. And my guy was like a cold blooded assassin murderer who's like one job away from retirement all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> but yeah, they went from that. They went to a barn where there was one of the people who was part of the organization that stole the painting. They're tied up. They questioned him, um, found out pretty much everything they got to know. They got a very hastily drawn map of the place, um, which they found out later some of the things were wrong about it because he drew it from memory very hastily. That is, that's actually part of the book. Um, that makes sense. And, See, I like that. Yeah. I really like yeah. that as a player. There really are just like details in there that is just wrong. And they do that. Um, I really wish they had done that with Prisoner 13 as well, but they gave you an actual, like, you know, 3D image, so they couldn't do that. I'm kind of upset that they did it for Horde of the Dragon Queen, but not Prisoner 13. They just drew the <laughs> yeah. DM map wrong on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, that's, that's something that they do in pretty much every one of these one shots is when you get the map from here on except for Prisoner 13, there's some things wrong. There are ways to figure out what's wrong. Um, you I could have used your potion of etherealness. If you had an invisibility, you could have scouted out the area. Mm, like yeah. you, you could have done a full-on scouting mission um, to scout out what was wrong. And there's other... In the other one-shots, you can talk to certain people and they'll tell you and they'll correct the map or something like that. Oh, okay. uh, but for this one... You could have scattered it out to figure out what was wrong. Uh, as far as the object, you know it's either in the basement, which you've searched the entire thing, so you know it's not there, or in the tower where the guildmaster sleeps. 
Um, so you guys got all your information. You ended up stealing a master key from someone. I rolled to see if he was already at the inn. Turns out he was in an alleyway by the time you got there. Ended up making it a pretty easy steal. Um, it was going to be a little more difficult in the inn because you would have had to somehow get him into an alleyway or try to steal the key in plain sight. Mm. Um, so you got the key. You went to the place and you started sneaking in. Now, the way you went was probably the sneakiest way, but it also involved the most like random combat stuff that could happen. Yeah, fish. <laughs> yeah, fish. So first, <laughs> so there was a puzzle. Um, there was an investigation check in a murky pool of water to find a key at the bottom of a pool. Um, to open up a lock that lets you go through an underground passageway. Um, so you eventually did that after a little bit of failure. Someone succeeded, opened it up, and a swarm of kippers is supposed to come out and attack you. And they do a lot of damage when they're at full health. That damage gets halved when they get down to half health. Oh. Um, but when there's a full swarm, they do 46 damage, Ooh. which is it's a lot of damage. Um, so they, I mean, they got through that okay. They went to the next hallway. The next hallway, there is. I was yeah. annoyed by the next hallway because there is actually there. There is no way written down to be able to see the skeletons that were animated. There is no check. There is no nothing. It is just you step on the middle square, you get shot at twice. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I it's think like, this was cool. around the time we had the very passionate talk about passive versus active perception. I also realized I was being a little bit too harsh on passive because a lot of things I read, um, the secret buttons, you actually are just supposed to be able to see if you have a high passive perception. That is a specific thing that I was reading around the internet. If there's a secret button and a passive perception person just walks close to the wall, they're supposed to be able to see something out of place. Um, so that I wasn't doing properly. But yeah, the fact that you literally couldn't see the trap, it was just, they step on the center square, they get shot twice, that's it. They do an acrobatics check to see if they get disadvantage on the attacks, but that's it. That's actually one thing we should maybe sidebar talk about, because there were, I don't know if you agree with me on it or not, but I said it during your game and it, set, it felt like a ruling and it felt like you accepted it as an answer. Um, was about passive and active perception. I have a 19 passive perception, but I roll a six. Does yeah. that now overwrite my passive perception? And I don't know if you agreed with me or not, but you didn't say no. <laughs> um, the way I've always seen that is if you could have seen it with passive perception, you would have. And the check that you're making is to see how much better than your passive perception can you see. And so maybe it's... Read Maybe it's enough to see that thing, and maybe it's not. Maybe you're not really good at looking at, for things, but you're good at noticing things. I agreed with you until I started looking it up more. Well, and I'm the not... general consensus... I know, I'm just saying, like, from what I've seen, is the general consensus is you can never get a roll less than your passive perception, which seems a bit crazy to me. And I, in certain circumstances, I agree with mm. you. But as far as a secret button goes, eh, I don't know. From what I've seen, like, you're not supposed to be able to get something less than your passive. You can, you cannot roll below your passive perception because you don't make any rolls for passive checks. There. However, if you roll an active perception check, your roll could be less than your passive perception score. That doesn't mean rolling is always a worse bet. So someone's actually explained this here. Uh, remember, so you, you can so get different are... information on passive versus active okay, success. So that makes a lot. Yeah. Sense. So that's kind of. I feel like that's in line with what I'm saying. Yeah. They're different, you can get different things. Different information. So if it's something that can go further. Now I'm not saying that they shouldn't be able to see buttons on a wall. I'm yeah. just saying that the low active roll doesn't automatically make your passive it perception means... worse. Right. Right. No, I it, see that. It just means that you're trying to look beyond your passive perception. So whether or, or not else. that doesn't determine whether or not the thing is seeable with passive perception. It just means that lowing roll on passive perception doesn't mean you now see less than you did a minute ago. Right. right. No, <laughs> because no. as this guy eloquently puts, you never roll your passive perception. That's true. You never roll your passive perception. Yeah. But yeah, so they did that. 
they walked through the maze. Um, fun fact, if you had gone <laughs> to the spot where the, like, breathing was coming from, yeah. and you would have stepped on a pressure plate that when all of the spots were active would have opened up another secret door. <laughs> that was it. There was nothing bad that happens in that corridor. Hmm. Zero things bad that happened in there. There were not actually traps. We, maybe um, we, but yeah. Maybe we should have trusted it. <laughs> you you went through the maze into the next section. You found a room with a butter brick in the middle of it. If you had not touched the butter brick, you never would have faced the mimic at all because it is literally a mimic. Or if you had brought the mimic butter, it would have conversed with you and told you things. It is a mimic that likes butter. Hmm. That is it. If you if you feed it butter, it will tell you and be your friend, and it will tell you whatever you want. If you <laughs> touch its butter, it will try to kill you. That wow. Is <laughs> that is a committed <laughs> mimic. Committed mimic. Uh, but yeah, you went from there. You went up a ladder after a short rest, busted the ladder open. There was guards in that room and a guard sitting on the trap door, which is why it was so hard to open up mm -hmm. and why it was with disadvantage. Um, and then your monk rolled out into there. Your into the room. And that's where we that's where we ended with four guards staring the monk down, who was in a disguise that he said he made. But the guy's only rolled an 11 to make it. So we're going to see what happens with that. <laughs> <laughs> What's their passive perception? Maybe passive insight or investigation to get through. a. I mean, it depends. Disguise. With an 11, it's pretty badly made. Do they perceive yeah. the giant gaps in the mask? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. What could go wrong? Anyway, speaking of what could go wrong, <laughs> what happened in Horde of the Dragon Queen? So we were playing Horde of the Dragon Queen this one time, and these guys, they were totally in this cave, right? <laughs> and, then, and then they went into this room where they saw three giant eggs. And uh, they're like, yeah, let's get closer down onto that and, and go look at them. And uh, they then saw that there were things down there that looked like they were guarding the eggs and then they said yeah let's go get those things and then combat happened for a very long time <laughs> yeah yeah um there was a yeah. roper and uh oh perfect music for this uh, <laughs> there was a roper and uh it did roper things and it reeled them all in over and over and over again and downed three people and the other two ran out of there. Yeah, don't be ran. Two of us ran full force. I'm a very fast. That March here is a very fast. Oh, yeah, he, he he's very fast. He's rogue sure. fast, but he's a ranger. He's rogue fast, but a ranger. So imagine when he gets bonus action dash. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. Just think about that. He's going to go crazy. But the three that got down uh, all got shoved in a meat locker um, where, depending on how long they were knocked out for, they may have had a chance to meet the only intelligent other person in that cave. Um, nice. But they all rolled one hour, so... Um, and then, we never knew. And then they also rolled to get out of their... They were bound. They had their hands tied behind their back. Um, but one of them was actually able to get out and untie the others, so it was ended up being fine. Um, and then they escaped. But they had a chance to ha to meet one of the sentient people. I don't know how that would have gone, actually. Because I, I wasn't part of that. Um, I that, ran. They only well, they awoke with one HP, right? So how would that have gone? <laughs> Is they might have died. Yeah, they that. I probably it was a CR2 thing so like if they tried to attack it if it killed them it fucking earned it <laughs> it might have killed them though even at CR2 like they had one health yep that's why it's like if they attack it like yeah I mean at that point they, they're just killing themselves kind of in my opinion yes that would be <laughs> actively trying to kill yourself in this game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh that would have been 
Not good. I didn't actually see any of that. I was, uh, I had ran. So I walked away from my computer for that time. Speaking of metaing and whatnot, I didn't even have a chance. No. <laughs> you didn't. Um, and then, yeah, after that, what else did you guys? Oh, yeah, you guys, uh, Aggie was like, um, you guys were going to go back. Right. There was a chance of us going back. I, I, <laughs> no matter what happened, I was going to play the fence as Martyr. I was going to sit on that fence and die on it. Yeah. That's when we learned the characteristic of Martyr that he doesn't make decisions. He just follows. We had a vote and yep. it was split two to two and I had the deciding vote and I was like, oh, I don't vote. I actually, I think I brought it. <laughs> I think I brought up the, 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 the voting in the first place. I was like, we should take a vote on it. <laughs> you and did. Then, and then we went two to two. And then there was like, well, you brought up the decision. I was like, oh, I don't vote. I just follow whoever goes where. <laughs> I call for votes. <laughs> I don't do them. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a service I provide. <laughs> uh, excuse me. You have to pay for the premium version of March Air for me to <laughs> meddle in your mortal affairs. Yeah. So that happened. And then we... I mean, we ended up not going in the cave. We almost went back in the cave with three, with three people. And I I mean, I don't think we would have killed the rope, but I'm pretty sure we would have just died. So what's really funny is that um, I believe next week. Um, There's another uh, rope. You know, what, what's his character's name? Maggie. No. Lightning Man. No. Zap. No. Barnaby. No. Koenig. Yeah. Koenig. <laughs> Way to say that one last. Um, <laughs> I don't think Koenig can be here next week. So when we continue the one shot, it's going to be Aggie that's there instead of Koenig. And I'm just going to play it off that you, you guys all just kind of vaguely remembered that one of Mega's brothers came with you. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm <laughs> nobody paid attention to which one it was. Sure. So Koenig actually stayed back. That that makes sense to me. <laughs> it's just kind of kind of funny and also makes sense. But yeah. yeah, through you guys deciding to not go back to town and just go to El Terrell. In fact, you're taking a longer route to go around the town. Because you specifically didn't want to go to the town. I I thought I honestly thought Greenest was out of the way. It's the only reason I said something about El Terrell. I thought Greenest was in the no. opposite direction. No. I, I didn't know that. I, I thought that Greenest was out of the way. It, I would have gone back to Greenest. It actually works better that you didn't go to Greenest. Because sure. then we would have had to role play again why Aggie isn't coming with us. And it would have been even more confusing when Aggie wasn't actually there. Or yeah. Aggie was there and Kanick wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is better. So it kind of worked out in the end, but you guys end up at this town that looks like some the woods. some bad it's stuff is happening. It's a cabin in the woods. Um, you guys are in the inn, and they seemingly want you to investigate some kind of a creature that look. It looks like a man. <laughs> hey. I was there, man. You, you can you, you, we're just trying to have a conversation. I know. saw everything, man. We're just trying to have a conversation. We were. Why are you so rude? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they kind of want. They're kind of putting off vibes, like they want you to deal with that. They're just. They're just putting off vibes, though. They're directly saying it. <laughs> yeah. Please help us, adventurers. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, originally, I... this side mission was going to happen between El Terrell and Baldur's Gate. Originally. Oh, but now it's happening before El Terrell. Yeah. So it just means I need to prep one more one shot. Yeah. Be fine. We're basically going to do one between every city that you can visit. Because at every sure. city, you can choose to, to take on a, a job for a bit because you, you'll find out the specifics later but you have to go by caravan and the caravan has to stop places so time gotcha. passes so like you can like pick yeah. up jobs as like bodyguards and sometimes sure. get information or money 
So basically, between those segments, we're going to be running one shots. I like it. And then if you have to have meetings with people in town, you'll have your meetings, get your information, whatever. And then you'll head out on the road again. And we'll end up doing a one shot of some kind. That makes sense to me. And I feel like I that's like the it. best way to pass a thousand miles of so <laughs> in-game miles. travel. So many miles. Uh, yeah. No, this should be a fun one shot. I got hit bad. by a thunder wave because because of course Zap decided to hit me. <laughs> Even with the knowledge that Zap would have known that he could have shot it out straight because <laughs> Zap's a caster and knows that thunder how magic was, works uh, yep but affinity didn't know that so affinity decided that zap wouldn't know that either at that point in time <laughs> and uh yeah i got hit with thunder wave which is fine because like we're just gonna go to sleep but <laughs> i got got hit with thunder wave because can you imagine yeah. if the thing came out of the woods after that i mean i understand that i did not follow zap's directions but that seems a bit harsh when zap would have known how to thunder wave forward i mean to be fair i did say it was a bit harsh that he threatened to kill a man yeah no zap <laughs> is very harsh i'm chaotic neutral zap is lawful evil <laughs> <laughs> i'm chaotic neutral leaning on good zap is chaotic neutral leaning on evil actually it would be more yeah. accurate yeah Two sides of the same coin. Yeah. Like, just, but I but the differences are stark. <laughs> I'm, I'm kinetic neutral because I won't threaten to kill a man, but if a man say doesn't want to live, it doesn't want to leave, even though I think he'll die, like, well, it's your decision. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to threaten to kill him to get him down. Yeah. You do you, guy. It's like, you do you. I'm just going to go hop over here and go, here, take the spoon now. Goodbye. <laughs> I've been actually putting that in everybody's inventories, by the I way. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I it's don't know. What saved everyone. I don't it's know. What saved everyone from dying to the roper, as far as Zap is concerned now. I don't know if they know that it's in their inventory, but like, if you're ever like, I don't know if I gave you a spoon or not, they can check their inventory and see. And it's there. It's good. Yeah, I mean, Marcher doesn't just keep track of what he gives people. He just gives people an item. I know, but it's slowly going to clog up their inventory. Yeah, it's great. I'm going to over-encumber everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wonder if he'll ever go back for that backpack of brochures. No. <laughs> that will be the end of Boop Snoop McBoople Stoop. <laughs> <laughs> he goes back in afterwards for his brochures. Kind of can't leave. I mean, if backpack. he doesn't, they're gonna find him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? They like they go and they're like, "Hey, where the fuck's our painting?" And then like, yeah, three weeks later, they find a backpack full of boop stoop, boop snoop McBoople stoots pamphlets with his address on them so that you can order his pottery they just show up they're like uh excuse me <laughs> so all i want to put into perspective is he is 65 pounds away from over encumbrance so that backpack was 65 pounds of brochure <laughs> oh i knew it would be i knew it would be Plus. full I, and i could tell he was doing the math <laughs> yep. he, he knew roughly how many brochures he had <laughs> it just keeps handing them out Oh, I knew the backpack was full. <laughs> what do you what do you says? I'm walking a little bit slower than normal. I'm like, but you're like 65 pounds away from over encumbrance. <laughs> like, oh, there's a lot of brochures in here. <laughs> and now I don't know when the snug was technically built, but sometime after the snug was built, we now got a brochure for Boop Stoop McBoople Stoop Pottery at Waterdeep. At yep. the, the Troll Skull Revival. <laughs> Campaigns were linked right there. Boom. Done. Yep. Somewhere in the water I'm, deep I'm going to mention it. I'm actually going to Some, mention it when it happens. Sure. Somewhere in the water deep lore, there are four members of the Golden Keys going and stealing things for people. Back for people. I mean, it takes place in Faerun, so... 
Yeah. Oh, it does. So like, it makes sense. You've it just works out. you've just decided that the year is the same year and date that my thing's yeah, happening. Yeah, because it, it does. It, it's a one shot, so it doesn't really give you a year. And I was like, yeah, sure. It's in the fall. <laughs> yeah, it's in the fall of that specific year. Yeah, uh, Horde of the Dragon Queen. Yeah, that's not Horde. That's a uh, Horde happens a lot. Oh, sorry. Time, I think before uh, Water Deep. Years yeah, before Water Deep. Yeah, Water Deep Dragon Heist. That's right. But yeah, that's what happened in Horde of the Dragon Queen. Yeah. We did that. And then, yeah. That was a good that was a good bar conversation. The guy kept on interrupting us, and I was just like, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, someone so asked to him. Us, yeah, I know. <laughs> so to tell us pertinent information to the adventure and i'm just like hey can you please stop interrupting us yeah they were talking they're about a they're basically trying to track down like a werewolf or bigfoot in the woods kind of thing something yeah and uh there's a guy at the bar and he's like i was there man <laughs> saw the whole thing <laughs> <laughs> bit my arm man <laughs> It's happening mid conversation with the barkeep, and I would just look, turn to him and was like, Can you please quiet down? We're just talking, trying to have a conversation here. That's very rude. And then he's just like, I went back out to where I found him and I set a bear trap. <laughs> <laughs> I eventually brought him drink and food. And Cal's still like, Would you be quiet? We're trying to have a real conversation over here. He's like, It's out in the woods, man. <laughs> <laughs> We did go over and talk to him eventually, and I brought him my food because we'd already eaten good berries. So I, I just brought him the stuff yeah. and was like, here's a meal. <laughs> here's a food. <laughs> <laughs> Cherish it. <laughs> that was fun. Okay, so D&D. &D. Tell me, Rufus, when are you supposed to run away? In this campaign, a lot. Um, I can tell. <laughs> so there's taught like. I feel like. Especially with rewritten campaigns, a lot of people have it in their head that the game is going to go like critical role and the heroes are, are always going to prevail. But the stark contrast between playing this a written campaign in critical yeah. role is they're writing a TV show. Right. Like, what? And don't get me wrong. Wizards I'm just writing a D&D campaign. I, I'm a traditional D&D campaign. I'm sure that they actually roll the dice and the numbers are actually real and there's consequences to their actions. Did you roll the dice? They've had characters die. They've had multiple characters die. But like, but I also wouldn't be surprised if some of those deaths were basic. They were scripted, not in the way that their roles were wrong, but in the way that the targeting of certain characters happened. Just like make sure this guy dies. Focus. This, focus. Focus all your combat on this guy till he dies. Then do whatever you want. Um, I I wouldn't be surprised if sometimes that happens. But at the end of the day, in that game, the heroes are gonna prevail. They're not gonna TPK ever. I don't think they've had a TPK. I think you're correct. Um, but th they're making a TV show, a D and D. Like, but I, I'm, I think Critical Role's more like the interactive shows on Netflix than, <laughs> okay, than real D and D at this point. I okay. feel like they do a really good job, but your games are never going to run like that. No, I it's mean, not a, a good player, representation gonna... of it's D and D at its apex, right? You've got people who are yeah. paid to actors to do D and D. Yeah. So. Yeah. But running away happens a lot more than it does even in those games. Like, if something seems too strong, there's there's a chance that it is. <laughs> right, you're supposed to get away, and not do anything with it, like just run. And if you are supposed to do something with it and you run away after your long rest, that will still be the only path forward. Yeah. W what do you lose from running away? Well, I mean, it depends on how far you are into a dungeon. If you run away, you might not be able to complete it. You might, unless you long rest and come back, like, you might lose information is really the main thing. 
you but might lose. If a it's bit really of important, you'll have to get but it some way like, or another. Right. And like you're gonna come away with your life, which is a good thing. Like the character still gets to continue, and the character would probably run away most of the time. Unless they're like a I, you know, don't ever shy away from a challenge kind of character. Or you like, never know. Okay. If you're severely outnumbered, they might just think, well, at least if they kill me here, I won't suffer. Sure. Or something like that. But for the most part, your characters don't want to die. Right. If they see a... What I now know is a CR5 monster, and it is just wrecking people by pulling them towards them with everything else. It's not specifically CR5. If they see something that's much more powerful than me... And something Renenzo brought up, which is very valid, is that the Roper did, in this Horde of the Dragon Queen, did come out before the Monster Manual. So, like, the one yeah. in the Monster Manual is balanced differently. Well, the only difference between the two of them is the distance and the tendril. Okay. But, but like... He can just move closer, so like I knew the fight would go yeah. long enough that it wouldn't matter. So I was like, "Why, why bother? Why bother? No, that's totally." Like, uh, I, I just went that. straight with the the dungeon master one because you know with a with the fifty feet, the people who weren't who were going to be more than fifty feet away from him weren't going to be in the fight. Correct. And he could have just moved close enough to make up the distance, so it was like, meh. Yeah, I'll just give him the full range, and right, right. that was the only difference. Yeah. But you, yeah, sh you should that's... run if you think that yeah. your character is going to die, unless... It's like in, a, I mean, it's... A, there's times it's a... where it's valid to stay and fight to the end. Yeah. But, like, not to kobolds. Right, it's one of those situations where it is also hard as a player to make the decision to run because as a player you're like, well, the rest of the group's going to be like, why did you run? Um, but there are times where you would just you would just run. Yep. Like, I feel like the dragon fight is another example of that. You could have just run away. It flew really... Uh, the, I mean, I guess the reason that I fought is because that thing could have caught up to any of us if it oh, wanted it's to. Oh, it it, it's true. And it was just attacking the crap out of us, so at this point it was focused on us and going to kill us, so running was an option, but it was one of those options that isn't really an option. Kind of. Like, had someone tried running away, it may not have chased it them. It, it might have ended up being okay, but... At that point, you see a dragon just killing your friends. You're like, oh, well, it's going to go to me next, probably. Yeah, I probably could run, but what's going to happen? Yeah. <laughs> or you're doing the chance-based thing of, it couldn't possibly attack me next. <laughs> <laughs> and then it did. It did. But yeah, I think running is a perfectly viable option in a situation. In any running, combat. I feel like a viable situation that's if you're not going to run, but let's say you're low health, getting away from an enemy and then using range is also a potential viable thing. Yeah. Um, that way it doesn't, you know, hit you twice when you're down, when you're melee range and you get killed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like running and also like being cautious in combat is totally viable and okay. I don't remember if it was you or who I was talking to, but at some point I want to run Tomb of Annihilation. You run a lot in that. I think you were talking to the whole group actually about that. Yeah, that's the kind of adventure where you have a whole binder of characters because yeah, you, you know you're going to die constantly. Because the whole thing about the Tomb of Annihilation is, is you're going through the tomb, which is specifically full of booby traps meant to try to kill you to keep you out. Yeah. And, there's... and they can kill you. You will die to booby traps in that campaign multiple times. One of the character concepts me and Renenzo came up with for that specific campaign was the character is a literal army of goblins. <laughs> and every time one dies, it just sends another one in. 
<laughs> so you just keep making different types and combinations of goblins. Yeah, there you go. Like, I think that's a hilarious concept that I get only really works in something like that. In tomb of, yeah. You just keep sending one in one at a time, one at a time. Or like, you know, they send them in at the same frequency, like one every 10 minutes. They just keep going in. <laughs> So, like, they all <laughs> vaguely get to see what the one before them did to get just that far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they can continue. <laughs> but I personally, I think that's a hilarious concept for a character. I love it. I love it. Horde of goblins. That's the character. <laughs> yep. A literal horde of goblins. That's what it takes to be like, the Tomb of Annihilation. You what just gotta I, get a horde of goblins. What I would probably start doing is rolling literal random characters. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, yeah. I know it's going to be a goblin. Roll. What class am I? Great. Roll. <laughs> what archetype am I? Great. And then, actually, I'd, I'd probably... I might pick the class. Just because I'll pick it based on where I put the stats. It's true. Because I feel like if I'm going to roll, roll literally class before stats, yeah, and then just put the stats in based off of the class. That's true. Yeah, we'll roll class and then archetype and then roll the stats. Yeah. And basically any decision I can possibly make in the character creation process randomly generate it because yeah, I plan to play a lot of goblins because <laughs> mechanically that's just funnier. Like yeah. if every game, oh, yeah. if every single game, I'm a different goblin. That'd be great. <laughs> Make every permutation of goblin. <laughs> but yeah, when things get too tough, run away. It's okay. Run away. Be cautious. Or just have another character ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, Did any of that actually go off the rails in the cave? Oh, yeah. Oh, it well, then what did you do? And how did you handle it? had the roper attack you <laughs> okay <laughs> um a lot of stuff with you guys goes off the rails yeah i think it's me it's whatever campaign i play in goes off the rails <laughs> you guys can't go off the rails in end of time because i already like i can just make up stuff on the spot and it'd be fine yeah and in out of the abyss you have yet to actually go off the rails or do anything unexpected <laughs> I mean, I guess going back to Never like Grove was probably a little bit unexpected. I was expecting that you guys would just avoid that place like the plague, knowing how plagued it was. I mean, uh, they that. really needed to tell me that, because as far as I knew, they were here not that long ago. I'm sure they'll tell me if something's out of place. No, nope, you got your not saying anything. Short term madness. It's great. Yeah. You have two uh, long terms. You got a short term now. No, just, I have two just, indefinites. That's what I meant. Sorry. Two indefinites. You got a short term <laughs> now. You're doing great. Oh, yeah. It's going to be fun on Tuesday. Can't wait. Because I still think Ross thinks he's totally fine, but he told me that he has stool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. And I'm sure that this mushroom who's panicking won't possibly say anything out loud. Right? Like... Because <laughs> he can speak telepathically, but he's definitely going to have the whereabouts in this, like, the the thought process to not say anything. <laughs> anyway, so, what do, you, what do you do when you're doing a book and things just go off the rails? It's a lot harder to compensate in a written adventure. Yeah. Anytime it takes me a long time to find something, there's a good chance we went off the rails. So a lot of in Waterdeep specifically. Yeah, that, that's why I'm like, I hate that they don't link these things together because like it's clearly possible to go this way. So when you're making the module, yeah. why is everything completely sequential and never back references? Yeah, I know that's kind of stupid. It only ever forward references. So, like, in the first part of the chapter, when it's like, you know, you can get to Area 8 from here. Click Area 8 um, to go there. Back the other There's way. never a way that says, if they came from Area 4, link. <laughs> yeah, no. There's never a backlink. So, like, I have There's... to find my way backwards and then keep them both open and then try to figure out where we are on both sheets and, like. 
Yeah. If you guys go completely so in order, that's why the one shots seem so much better done. It's because it's bang, 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 bang. And that's it. And we're just yeah. yeah, down down the line. And it's totally fine as a DM to say, hey, can we just like take a couple seconds? I gotta I gotta refigure out what's happening. Like yep. don't if you're running a a pre made adventure, don't improv to a point where it ruins the adventure. Like take a little time and like figure out oh, okay, so they went this way, this way, this way. I probably should do this. Yeah. Don't don't feel like you need to be rushed into making a snap decision that now either gives them way too much information or puts them on a path that they're never supposed to be on. Like, because you guys went down to the Roper room before going up and going around, Yeah, I had to figure out how to handle that because the description of how the Roper works in Horde of the Dragon Queen is different than the like apparently Roper that Roper can talk, but it doesn't say it can talk. It doesn't say that it's any different than what's gonna be in Actually I Monster wouldn't... Manual, whatnot, wherever it is. Yeah, so like you just have to know chronologically that this adventure came out before the monster manual to not just use the monster manual one. Yeah, it has zero languages in the monster manual one. Cause like, hold on a sec here. Let me get to the table of contents of this bad boy. Where does it put a monster? Page eighty-eight. Let me see if what the Ropers does. The Roper have a language in his own thing? Nope. No, the Roper has no language. Its languages are blank. Even it's not supposed to be even able to speak. even in Horde of the Dragon Queen's definition of a Roper, though. Oh, I don't know that one. I don't know the book. Yeah, I'm, uh, that's what I'm looking at right now is the PDF for that. And they don't have a stat block for a roper. Ooh. How dare they? Maybe that's just further proof that they don't expect you to ever fight it, even though it says it will attack if attacked. What? The, how is that supposed to work? It says in the book it will fight them. I don't. I don't know. It, yeah. No, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how this works. Yeah. I. I don't get it. Yeah. No, there's just straight up no stat block for that. Doesn't exist. Goodbye. Have a good day. <laughs> Rest in peace. Goodbye. Have a good day. But yeah. Oh, and also, I guess I should I should self plug us right now and mention that Court of the Dragon Queen, Prisoner 13 and Masterpiece Imbroglio are currently being uploaded to YouTube in their entirety. They are um, on any day that we're not live. There's a video coming out on YouTube at noon my time which is earlier your guys is probably time i think i'm probably the furthest east of anyone watching so yeah you can check those out on our on our youtube or you can go into the discord they're in there as well um or you can check out our other platforms there and find us on youtube if you want either way we're gonna start now that we have a good export process set up, we're going to start uploading anything we have to full completion. I'm going to take a look and see if I have the entirety of Ed of the Abyss, because I was recording them for a while. I think the first two we missed is my... I, I think we were deciding whether we wanted to actually... No, I have the first few. It's going to be a, a couple middle ones if I don't have them. I remember because I was doing video editing on the first one. So I like I definitely have the first few. So it'll just depend on. If I got them all the way up till I started exporting from Twitch or if we missed a couple in the middle, but anything we have to its entirety from here on out will be uploaded to YouTube. And basically the way it's going to go is when we stream it, it's going to come out the next day that we're not streaming. 
and we're yeah. not going to overlap. So yeah, hopefully we'll be good for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Court of the Dragon Queens only once every two weeks, and we only got one more one shot. So we're we're going to run out quick, but you know. Yeah, it's be fine. <laughs> Uh, yeah when they go off the rails you just have to uh, in my opinion just take the time and figure it out like if you've watched any of the campaigns that i dm i don't just guess i try to look it up and at the end if i've taken yeah. some time sometimes i'll just guess what my you know best guess is based on everything that i've already read about this module yeah yeah at least even if i'm wrong i won't completely screw it up <laughs> it's true um like when those kids just randomly fell in the lake they they did they fell in the lake <laughs> he thought he could make the jump and couldn't but that the, the way that's originally written and they're playing on the ice and they fall through but yeah. yeah in mine he just tried to make a jump that he couldn't make and he fell into the river yeah no it's totally fine everything's fine totally fine but yeah, you just make your... This is where, you know, the amount you know about the module really shines. Um, you don't even have to really know what's going on in the chapter. You just have to know if overall this is going to impact the story. And if it doesn't, you can... Like, it's probably not going to happen. The very first thing in the chapter wrecks the entire chapter. It's probably yeah. going to be something small, so you can wing it for a bit. Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like all these are kind of about players right now. Because we've I talked feel like about. That was what we were talking about. So we're far. just kind of airing Running our away, grievances. Off of the. Going off the, the uh, rails. Then. Uh, now we're going to talk meta, about. Meta. Meta. -ing. meta -ing. Um, what? So. <laughs> here's my dilemma is that like i feel like some people can handle having knowledge they don't need to know and some people can't like if we were in combat with something and i wanted to look it up that would not influence my decision of how i'm gonna play that character right as i you know as mm -hmm exhibited by the medusa i didn't need to google the medusa to know that it was going to turn me to stone if i looked at it and even though rusty I mean, it, it, said it something didn't even have to specifically and rusty i mean rusty he they they did it the right way like he no no he i mean even though role, he even but... though he said it yeah like i was still like well my character wouldn't have had time to fully process that and react he's not going to avert his gaze correct so, like, I can draw the line between what my character knows and what I know, so I don't think it's meta for me to pull something up in the middle of combat because it's not... I've got, I'll die Right, here. as long as it doesn't actually... Yeah, and as long as it doesn't actually influence your... But I don't, do, I don't do it often, but... Yeah, I mean, sometimes people will do that and sometimes they'll do it too, but I never let it influence a character decision. I will never look at things specific to a module, though. If someone's running like a oh no 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 or something, I won't look it up. I'll just, I don't. I look up because I also know that like you as a DM and me as a DM, I'll tell my players if they go a separate way and they're long past something, I'll tell them what could have happened. Like if mm -hmm. they're ever interested, you can always ask after a session. Well, what could have happened, and I'll gladly tell you. Yep. Yeah, I gladly. I feel like. And, and again, I, people play for different reasons, but for me, I play D&D &D to experience the story. Yeah. So, like, I don't want to read ahead. I want to know what I'm right. fighting to know how screwed we are sometimes. Right, right. Like, what is this? Oh, God. But, like, we've chosen to fight this, and I have to decide what the resolve of my character is. Or whether you think it's... If it, like, hits someone really hard or one-shots someone, then the running away part kind of comes into play there <laughs> if it's super powerful then you've seen it be super powerful even if you've also read it yeah exactly like, you've already like if my if i feel like my character has an idea of how hard it's going to be to fight i'll look it up 
cheer. That makes sense. Like, if I hit it three or four times and you're like, it's looking pretty hurt. And like, none of us are touched. It's like, yeah, I'm just going to see what this thing is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or like, or you hit it three or four times and I'm like, yeah, it doesn't even look like it took a scratch. I for that, I usually wait till someone's about to die. And then it's like, OK, what is this? <laughs> What's about to happen? Now that somebody is one hit away from death. Can't do that with a homebrew character. That's the best part. No, but I can <laughs> guess what it's based off of. We kind of do the same thing. We base them yeah, off of things. The only character, and this will be fun because you'll eventually get to face it, that I have not used a base is Asmodian. He does not have a base. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he has zero base, so there's nothing you can guess, at least until his mythic base which you've already seen can you calculate action see you, sh you should for fun. i could calculate it probably at some point yeah i bet there's it might be i bet there's so a you CR guys calculator already online break yeah like the cr rule because you already do so much damage and we're at least we're so cohesive as a party that you could kill anything that was like cr probably 19 and up or 19 and down without an issue so I'm going to send you a link and I need uh -oh. to pull up his stats from Foundry, though. OK, I'm I'm just breaking things. That's all. It's not breaking things. Oh, I can't. They're very fragile. I can't get to my chat right now for Discord, but uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep it open and I'll send it to you later. And um. I was just, smart you just, with that. You just pop in all the stuff so, here and it'll tell you the CR of him. And I only want to know after it's the fight is over. I don't think I have the Shadow's actual CR, sadly. I don't have his character anymore, or I would have done that with the Shadow too. It's based off a of Lich, but it is. If the CR of actually the Shadow, not the Shadow that you faced, which was the very hurt version of it. Because, like... A CR 17 monster would have a 6 proficiency bonus, a 19 armor class, and about 310 hit points, and a plus 10 to attack, with a damage of about 105 per round. A damage of about 105 per round, wow. That would be a CR 17 monster on average, with a DC of 19 to save. Um, I don't think he has a DC. Whereas, so like, what a... if, what if the mythic action that you've already seen is him turning into some form of an ancient dragon? <laughs> like, th th there'll be ways around that. It's not like you're. Yeah, you would have to do the CR that. of both forms individually. Well, I mean, it's 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 that that part is based off of. Uh, his mythic action is based off of an ancient black dragon. But. Yeah. And like a CR6 has a proficiency of 3, an armor class of 15, 146 to 160 hit points, and does 39 to 44 damage per round with a DC save of 15. That's such a good cheat sheet. Holy shit. Can I save that? <laughs> I'm gonna bookmark this. Dang. The deficiency bonus is technically one lower than it should be. Yeah, this is actually really useful. So, like, when you see something in the DMG is like a CR 12, um, you can just be like, okay, it's going to do 75 to 80 hit points per turn in damage. Okay. How many hit points do my dudes have <laughs> combined? <laughs> Because really what you're trying to find out is how many rounds of minimum or like low end damage would it take to kill everybody? Yeah. And then, you know, decide if you think your players can kill them quicker than that. Because that's really what it comes down to is amount of damage per round. And AC. Yeah. yeah. 
That is very, very true. And I you had you had a you had a special request that wasn't oh, yeah. on the schedule. No, it was a it was a it was a thing for a fighting style. I was randomly thinking of that would be really good, possibly too overpowered for barbarian. Um, called retaliatory slash, where you can, as a reaction, if something's about to hit you, you can force it to succeed on the hit as if you're like pulling the sword forward, but you get an, a slash in return. So you're taking damage. To attack, you know, like in an anime when something really powerful yeah. like pulls the sword strike in and then attacks you, it's the it's the thought process behind that. It's like a fighting style where you take damage to give damage out as a reaction. Is this something you're home brewing? No, well, I mean, like possibly, but I, I would just I thought about it randomly because we were talking about anime and that kind of mm. thing, and it's like that would be. I feel like that's a bit of a missed opportunity because I I would make I think that would make Barbarian late game a little bit more powerful. But, yeah, because they kind of drop off, but giving them retaliatory slash, making it so that they can because they know they're going to take half damage from most things. Yeah. So you use that as your reaction. It gives them an extra ability to hit, and you do get an attack where you pull them in. You know, it's before essentially the DM says the monster's going to use an attack against you, and you say, okay, the first attack hits, but I deal, you know. Mm -hmm. You are taking the damage to also hit something. You know, it would almost be cooler if the amount of damage he took was his plus to hit or something stupid like that. That sure. way, like, the harder he gets hit, or, like, you know, the more... But basically, the better the creature he's fighting, the better the chance he'll hit it back. Sure. No, I, I like that. I think that would be a that's cool the whole point way to is to it. kind of try and balance barbarian late game. They do a good job because they still can get a good amount of attacks off. But like, give them that extra ability to be a barbarian. Let them purposely take a hit to attack. Man, we should we should make a cool little module like that where it's just like, hey, here's some cool. Archives. Here's some cool things. That'd be a, that'd be a fighting, probably a fighting style. Where if you're really ballsy, you take it early on. Should... You can switch out fighting styles at every um, um, ability score improvement level. They change that as an optional thing. Oh, so you what? Can switch out a fighting style then. Oh, cool. Yeah. So like you would take something else early, and then maybe you could switch to that later game, and then be able to do stuff i mean it would be really cool i feel like that'd also be really cool in the whole like i'm a barbarian i'm purposely taking damage and like yelling at them as i slash them with my greatsword at the same time and maybe if you're using a two-handed weapon it's not you're pulling the weapon towards you but you're going into the attack which is surprising to the creature you're fighting because you're purposely like leaning into a hit to do damage i was thinking of something the other day and uh, I'm going to say it on stream so that maybe someone will clip it and we can remember it. <laughs> maybe someone will actually do that for us. Um, what I was thinking was when at some point when we're both finished of our Sunday campaigns around the same time. Um, what we could do is we could write a campaign together where there's two sets of adventurers going through the world at the same time. I'm down. So like we build the world together and yeah. we're both kind of running adventures in the exact same world and we could actually pull them together some. Hey, Favel, he got that was us too early. No, that's good enough. That's good <laughs> no, that's enough. Perfect. I'm just giving him crap. And uh, it's what I do. But yeah, we could we could totally do that. We could run two separate adventures in the same world with like the maybe the same main villain. And both, sure. of our, both of our characters, for some reason, won't make it to the final fight. And we'll co-DM the final thing. Sure. I have no issue with that. I like the idea. I like. I think it could, co it could go off pretty well. What we could also do, when both of our Sunday campaigns are over, are just co-DM on a Sunday so we don't have to play every other Sunday. Oh, yeah, like me and you just run the game for like six or seven people. 
God, that would that's so that's such a better idea. God damn it. We could we could actually blend the two together though. We could have our players okay. play every second week and we could co DM it. We could. We could do that. If they would rather only play every other week, we could do that. Yeah. To or, blend it. Or if they want to play every single week, we could we could Just act run a large table with two people. Yeah. yeah. I really like that. Yeah. And we could do it in whatever software allows co-DMing. Like, if you can get a plug-in for it, great. If I can get a plug-in for it, great. Yeah. I... No, I like that idea for sure. I don't know when that's going to happen, because Tyranny of Dragons takes a long time. And so but, does, but so is your next campaign. Yeah, no, it's going to take a long time. Both of them take a long time. We can see if we can line it up. If we can line it up... Well, we probably I can. Mean, mine's a homebrew, so I can pretty easily line things no, up. No, but, like, where you want it to end, right? Yeah. Don't skip stuff, but, like, if, if I finish my campaign first, I'll just be like, okay, how much more time do you think we realistically have? Yeah. And then, and we'll then just, I'll let you know. Yeah. We'll run something that's that long. Yeah. We'll just make that happen. And then the next set of campaigns will be everybody all together. And we'll run a big campaign. I like that idea. I like that idea better because then we can eventually merge our Sunday campaigns into one. So that yeah. we're playing it. I mean, I feel like we both like Waterdeep and Out of the Abyss is ability to just play every week and if you miss a week it's not like you're missing yeah a month. yeah exactly i wish that i had saturdays open and would be cognitive enough to do that because i would suggest to my group to move to saturdays but i physically have i have to open on saturdays so me trying to dm a saturday honestly Sat would be, saturdays, saturdays are honestly worse for me <laughs> I could yeah, probably no, make like, it work, but it's worse. Yeah, it just like no, nah, it didn't seem like it was worth it. Because yeah. like, but that would be that'd be a cool thing to go to. Saturday, to Saturday still feels like a weekend because you get to sleep in the next day. Yeah, it's so like that's the night I definitely want to be doing I mean, stuff. I I don't. Yeah, no, that's good. Like in real life, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, because you don't want to. Yeah. For me, Saturday is just like, well, I'm going to have to work tomorrow anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that'd be cool. Eventually, we merge them into one big, big campaign. Mm. Do it. Do a thing. But that one, so that one, if we're co-DMing, it would be a homebrew, right? And we would both do a completely different thing. Or would we do a what would we do an adventure? Because this is a lot of people, so we need to scale. <laughs> Scaling, I feel like, would almost be easier to run a homebrew because you can just scale from scratch. Ah, to just of run people. Tomb of Annihilation. <laughs> <laughs> just co <code> DM <laughs> Tomb of Annihilation. <laughs> you play until you die, and then you go and back you on the DMs. rotation. No, no. <laughs> for the players, we'll have like eight players, but we'll throw four in. And we'll just be like, <laughs> hey, you're on deck for when this person dies. And then they Hear come in out. with the character. <laughs> you get a group of DMs that play Tomb Annihilation. And the first character that dies gets to be the DM. And you keep switching it off. So two characters die at the same time and you flip a coin. But literally, you might only DM for one encounter. Because the next encounter, someone might die. Then you got to switch. So all four of the people know the book. Five people know the book. <laughs> but you just switch every time a death happens. They're now the DM. And then the other person has a character ready to go. That would be hilarious. Musical DMs, Tomb of Annihilation. Every time someone dies, you tag them out. Didn't we say we wanted to do something like that for April Fool's we were, someday? We were going to do April Fool's, like, every so often you change the DM. I feel like that would be even more fun, though. Tomb of Annihilation, but every time someone dies, <laughs> change the DM. So everyone would have... In that case, everyone would have to know the module. Everyone would have to know it front to back. And then you just go. Yeah, it would be hilarious if, like... So you could do... I don't know if... Like if it Fantasy. was if we found a day that like everybody all had off, we could just start at like seven in the morning yeah, and, just go. and just play to like midnight and find out yeah. how far through Tomb of Annihilation we can get switching yeah, DMs yeah. constantly. I think Foundry 
I don't know if Finisher Grand has something that would work, but Foundry, you can just switch ownership of things. So you can technically make... You can give someone... You can give everyone pretty much owner permission so everyone can see everything. And then you can also turn it off. So you would just have someone constantly switching the permissions when someone dies. I feel like Foundry is the optimal place to do that. I think you can actually... Aren't you might be able to do a co DM thing? I'm not 100% sure. That's basically co DMing if we both have ownership over everything and you can also give me visibility okay, to the you, entirety I think you of the module. Pretty much give everyone, you give everyone admin when they become DM. So you switch it to that yeah. person now has admin permissions, but the other person loses admin permissions. So now you're in the dark except you, for your character. But you can make but two admins, right? You can make multiple admins, yeah. Then yeah, you can definitely co DM if you can make two admins. There you go. We're already starting this from this is probably like two plus years in the future, but we're already starting <laughs> this idea. <laughs> we still have another rest of the year left on end of time. Yeah, we got time. If, until it ends. if there, yeah. <laughs> there's one thing we have, it, there, it's time until it's all gone. Then we don't. I think that's our D&D &D portion. I mean, I do feel, do, I feel like we should just keep, Yeah, I feel like we should just keep sure. talking about d and I feel like that's what people pay us to do. I don't yeah, think at it, this point, I, I mean, we do a good job at this. I'll look up the E3 date and we'll say that. Sure. And then E3 is happening. E3 2023. What was it? It was like July. Yeah. No, June. June 13th. The June 16th is E3. So we'll be doing something, I'm sure. Let's see, are any of those stream days? June 13th is a Tuesday, and June 16th is a Thursday. Is the big show on the last day, or is a Friday? Shoot. So we'll, we could do something on the 15th. Yeah. We could. We could do E3 stuff. Who's even at E3 anymore? I wonder if they have a full schedule up yet. Who's even at E3 anymore, though? Nintendo isn't going to have their direct around E3 anymore. I don't think so. Oh, wait, Thursday's the years. Thursday's the only day that gamers are allowed to go. Or, or is the is partial... the first day the first day gamers are allowed to go? Sorry. Gotcha. Thursday, Friday. I don't know. Okay, schedule. I'm not business days. Okay. So we might. They got to put out a better schedule than this, but we might they be will. able to actually stream something live about it. That'd like, cool. like watch it. We we could probably do that. Yeah. Okay. What else do we want to talk about D&D? &D? I just wanted to mention that because we always cover it. That we're getting back into Out of the Abyss and I'm excited. Yeah, we are getting back into Out of the Abyss. And I'm also excited for that. Yeah. It's going to be good. We got a good group of guys there. Everyone's Everyone's got, got a, another character ready to go just in case. It's looking, it's looking great. Should I make another character? I don't know. Okay, I'll make another character. <laughs> <laughs> I... I. <laughs> it depends. If the answer so I, wasn't no, I'm going to make another one. <laughs> I... I was generous with my position of where I put you guys in the map where everything started to happen. And I think that might mean everyone lives. Okay, so but I'm gonna do. I'm gonna roll another one. You're gonna in, have, in case in case. It depends on. I feel like you guys are actually very tempered as far as not being super headstrong. Oh yeah, I'm hoping we run away, but like I'm also I also don't really want to be caught. So you're about you're about halfway through, so you probably can get about half your guys' weapons coated with mushroom oil at this point. Oh, that's how it works. 
You're, you're about halfway through, so you've kind of collected about half the mushrooms you needed. Yeah, but I didn't know if they were different species, and we just couldn't do it at all if we didn't have them all. It doesn't actually say that was my decision. <laughs> oh. It was. It. I, I'm gonna. I, I. Yeah. The book doesn't actually say specifically how much it takes. It just says that it happens. Hmm. It's like they can go back and do this thing, and it literally in the book the wording. Oh, where where are we, Blingdon Stone? So. Why do I have unlimited character slots in D&D Beyond? Did they recently make that part of free tier? They either made that part of free tier or because you're in a campaign with someone that has not free tier. No, I, yeah, I, it, I didn't always have that. And I'm barely certain I'm not paying for this. <laughs> I, I mean, it's it's once every six months. So maybe you paid the 30 bucks randomly. Registered user. Let's see. How do I find out this account? Profile? Profile, right? No. How do I get... How do I subscribe? Subscribe. There we go. So it... Okay. With, with the thing that can concoct the oil to protect your weapons, it says if the characters have already been to Never Lake Grove and witnessed the horrors of what happened they can discard this idea or brave a stealthy return <laughs> <laughs> so it's like if they go back they might die but oozes won't affect your weapons and yeah i don't understand and armor. my subscription am i paying for this oh i am paying for this okay why did you pay for it so i could keep all my characters forever it's only two bucks. Okay. It's gonna fail next time though. <laughs> because my credit card expired and as part of a strategy to kick things I don't need to pay for, uh, <laughs> I just don't update my cards anywhere and then decide if it's worth keeping. Yeah, I did pay for the whole year. Hmm. I have it till November. That would explain that. Yeah, I like being able to keep all my characters forever. I'm probably going to export all these dudes and put them into fantasy grounds just so I always have them. Or print them or something. These were Makes all sense. super fun characters to play. Yeah. I've still you got Spagoogs. He's still there. I've still got somewhere. Dennis and, and Galtorin. Actually, I can oh, have no. these. I can have these guys okay. leave the campaign now because I have unlimited character slots, and the I only think reason I cut Spaguglio out of you the did. campaign. You yeah. did. You did. That's okay. I was I was cleaning up all the. I was trying to put my campaigns to less deactivated characters and just the four, so I can easily select it. Yep. I will say, I think if. If I ever start playing in person again, I'm going to encourage my players to use D&D Beyond for their character sheets and to just spend the money to buy the pieces they need. Oh, yeah. That's so much easier to have that than having to write things down. You just have your yeah. phone out. Like, you literally yeah. can have it on your phone. The app's not fantastic, but it works. Like, I, I did that. The app is person. really good on a tablet. I've used D&D Beyond in person before. I had my players in my last campaign, my first campaign I run, Halfway through, we started using D and D Beyond, mm -hmm. and they would either like some of them had phones, some of them had their laptops, like they had stuff to just like look it up on. Because like, I think I'm always gonna be DMing using Fantasy Grounds as a virtual tabletop. Yeah. But like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just old and grumpy now. But I feel like if I've paid hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. To get all the books required to play this game, you can spend 10 bucks on a character worth of class options if you don't want to buy the books, even. Maybe I'm just old and grumpy, but... Or you can no, just like, write it I down. I really <laughs> wish that they had 
the ability to like scan the barcode on a book in person that way I could or like a, a physical copy of a book that way I could you know do you know why Dean have I told this. you why they don't yeah because so, you could they're saying you could just scan the barcode at a store constantly right no like, no no but keep... but like that's not why because they could fix that by shrink wrapping the book but there's a reason they won't do that money nope what they honestly think that people in bookstores want to flip through the pages of the D and D book before they buy it. I'm pretty sure that they're there to buy it no matter what. I don't think they want to flip through it. No, but they think that they're getting sales that way by people like who, who didn't go there to buy that book. will just pick it up and look through it and be like, Oh, this looks kind of cool. But that's not, that's no, I mean, maybe like 30, 40 years ago, but like, no. Well, on a on a brighter note, did you see that um, Dungeon Alchemist added their caves update? I haven't. No, haven't? I have not so seen you, that. I can make underdark things and like cave things. I'm excited. Oh, I can show that actually on stream. I made my first Dungeon Alchemist map. I'm excited to see everything that you did because I'm. Dungeon Alchemist is good. It's very... I, I like it a lot. You were... How, was, how are your thoughts on the first time you use it? I feel like... It's going to get better. I don't feel like there's enough options, but I feel like that will yeah, get better. Yeah, I mean, they are constantly adding options, which is good. What was it? For Waterdeep, I... Where did I put that? Hmm. I don't remember where that got saved. <laughs> oh, now I know. I'm going to show you guys the very first map we made. It was the tavern. Oh, yeah. that's so big. Okay, I didn't expect it to be like so big. <laughs> First map I ever made. The Chrono Trigger. Can I just like transform this somehow? I think I can. Yeah, transform. Edit transform. Um, can I just make it smaller by a percentage? It's probably was crazy. No. Oh, let's just go twelve eighty by seven twenty. There. Oh, that's not a good at. It's a bit stretched because I had to guess at what aspect ratio this picture is, but that's that's I'm the sure first map waiting. I made with it. I'm waiting to see this. Oh, transition! Yay! Oh my god, it is stretched, but it looks good. The entire, like almost the entire time that took to bring up, I was trying to make it smaller and smaller and smaller, so I had to settle with just typing in a random size. Yeah, um, I like it. So. I'm really happy because you were able to pick a background, so you had the cobblestone path and everything, right? Yeah. A lot of the they added that in re, like s probably a few months ago to actually do that because it used to always just be dark parchment as the background. Mm. I'm really happy that they changed that, and it's it's pretty great. Like you actually can have a full setting now. It it kind of feels bad because like I feel like there's some things in the items that like they definitely did not need to put in there at all and then there's certain things that they definitely should have had in there that aren't there I'll, I'll i'll definitely give you the fact that they they haven't had the best direction on exactly where to go there's some random stuff that they probably didn't need to work on already but they already did mm -hmm. um but it's really, really convenient to just draw some squares and then edit a room a little bit, as opposed to having to draw everything out or find something online. Oh yeah, like I've I've been loving it for homebrew specifically more than anything, 
Except for your next map in End of Time, I did not make a Dungeon Alchemist, but you will understand exactly why hmm. when you see it. Will you tell me what's, what you used to make it, or if you bought it or found it somewhere? The internet. Okay, so this is one that some... You didn't make it. You built around the framework of this... This like, map was made by Nintendo. Ah. <laughs> so what software... So someone else made the the D D map though or did you make it you'll see <laughs> <laughs> oh boy i didn't touch it at all actually okay this map was just made directly by nintendo put into D D by me it's i okay <laughs> I'm not going to spoil it for the fans. Well, well, what is it? It's Pac-Man. No. You're not in Pac-Man world. You're in Castlevania world. Oh, it's directly tied to the thing we're in right now. Okay. Yeah, that's your next map. Because you guys are still in the world. Because we were at con, the fact that you left. Since you don't have to leave No, yet. yeah, it's going to be Strahd. No, not Strahd. Dracula's Tower. Close. Look. Symphony of the Night Tower. No, you're in a different... I don't know if you know what game... I don't think you, you know which Castlevania Two? game you're in. Yeah. <laughs> so you know exactly what Castlevania game you're in. Okay. Can't remember who the... What, uh, Do you remember Alucard? Alucard? Too? Alucard. No, Simon is the... It's... Yeah, you're trying to get all you're trying Simon. to get you're trying to get all the Dracula pieces so that he's not but I can't yeah. remember where the end takes place. Oh, you're not. I mean, you're literally in the town at the start. <laughs> yeah, but you said that the map I for the final thing of this was pulled from somewhere. So I figured it'd be the final the final map. thing of what? Castlevania next too. session. Oh. I thought you said you said something about the last thing, didn't you? Oh, for the last session, the next session. I meant to say the next session we play. Oh. The last session, I'm the last session. I'm drawing the map because it's actually going to be very important. What is on in the map? Okay, I thought you meant how it's the made. last session. I was like, okay, but like, why does it have to be Castlevania? And you're like, because that's where you're. I was no, like, no, oh, no. so it's going to be the end of the Castlevania thing. No, 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 no. Where you are fighting as okay. Modian is very specific and. Like, you guys have already seen a lot of the mechanics of the fight through different fights of Asmodian. So, mm -hmm. just pulling a lot of those together. Like, I need to make two copies of this map on the same map, because you already yep. know one of the things you can do. So, like, I need to create it in Dungeon Alchemist and make it a double. Actually, to work properly. yeah. I can't just pull from the internet for that. I need to actually like create it and make a double and mm. yeah. That way I don't have, cause I can't pull you guys in between scenes in foundry. Hey, <laughs> and I also finally like, found its weakness. I don't like having to go between two maps constantly <laughs> like that stair fight. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if I wasn't able to have both of those up at once? That would be impossible. That fight would not have worked. <laughs> would not have worked. Anyway. Yeah, that Is was... Is everything else you want to say? No, that was that was great. Uh, so you guys should come back tomorrow for Waterdeep Dragon Heist, where we yeah. go down a bunch of one-shots. Yeah. One man down. One shot, one man down one wizard down you keep saying time. sorcerer you keep saying sorcerer <laughs> you uh you chose sorcerer you keep saying that this is a younger version of gandalf but i've yeah. story plotted in lots of old man naps that's <laughs> <laughs> because like this i know it's a much more brash version of gandalf mm. gandalf is not wise yet mm. gandalf has yet is, is learning how to become wise by taking old man naps <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Easy>. <laughs>
he realizes that that's the one thing they have that he doesn't naps <laughs> if he takes more naps he'll get more wise exactly you get it well i don't have anything else same okay so we're gonna say goodbye goodbye stream you guys have a good night goodbye